in the high desert, 40 miles north of Tombstone in southeastern Arizona, sits the Mezcal Movie Lot, where for the last 70 plus years, over 100 movies and TV shows were filmed. And arguably the most popular of them all was the movie Tombstone. Today, we are checking out the Tombstone filming locations here at the Mezcal Movie Lot. And that's coming up right now on Desert Sky Adventures. This fellow here goes by the name of Lieutenant Dan, and he'll be our guide through the Mezcal Movie Lot today. And he brought us here to this first filming location. The wind was pretty bad, so I'll go ahead and do the narration on this one. But if this building looks a little familiar to you, it might be because this is where they shot all the exterior scenes for the Birdcage Theater in the movie Tombstone. Now you can tell that this is the right location because as we see here from the film, if you peek around the corner of the Birdcage, there's Wyatt Earp's house in the background there. And peeking around the corner of the facade, there's Wyatt Earp's house. Looks a little different, it's changed a little bit through the years, but that is the same house we see in the movie. All of the interior birdcage shots were done on a soundstage at Old Tucson Studios, but all the exterior shots, like this one right here, were filmed right here at the Mezcal movie set. So, according to John Farkas in his book, the people he interviewed about that said that quiz time, folks. Do these two cottages look familiar to anybody? Yes. Yes. You know what, who they are, who they belong to, and what film. I was pretty sure I recognized this filming location right away. Was that Wyatt Earp's house in Tombstone? Which one, the right one? Yeah. Maybe. Or was it the yes, other one? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you remember, right after Virgil gets wounded, remember when Wyatt walks out in that night scene and up on horseback ride Turkey Creek, Texas Jack, and Sherman sure McMasters. All that would have been filmed right there in front of the cottage. In this shot, we see Wyatt leaving the building that we just saw. And again, you can tell this is the right location because there's Wyatt's house in the background. Notice the porch. And this is from a different angle, but that porch is exactly the same as it appears in the film. Here we see a shot of Kurt Russell standing on the porch of that building. And notice the window and post behind him there. Here we see the same window, same post, just right side of the door. As we approach what would have been Allen Street in the movie, I recognize these buildings right away. Now, of course, the facades have changed quite a bit through the years for different film and production, but these are no doubt the same buildings that we see in the movie. All right, let's go back to Tombstone. Do we remember the night scene when Curly Bill Brocious is in the opium den? Mm -hmm. This is where the opium den was located, right here in this open alley. So the Chinese opium den tent was here, Powers Booth would have walked out, and that's when he made, he says, I feel capital. He starts shooting the town up. Well, this is the building where he shoots into the window. This would have been Andy's saloon in the movie. Uh, he shoots out the street light, and then do you guys remember who does he encounter, or who challenges him to give up his guns? Marshall White. Yes, Marshall White. Very... <laughs> well done. Right over here at the opening of the alley, that's where they filmed that scene, where Harry Carey Jr. plays Marshall White, and that's where he challenges Curly Bill Curly Bill in turn shoots him. Cowboys come out, Wyatt Earp comes out, and then the scene ends when Val Kilmer walks out from the double doors there of the Oriental and says, I have two guns. One, One for each of you. Fair? Wow! <laughs> I don't even need to talk anymore. The paint color has changed, and you can see they added those two fire escapes to the side of the Crystal Palace, but other than that, it looks exactly the way it did in the film. Here's another shot looking down Allen Street, which I recognized right away when I was at the actual movie lot. Again, they have changed a bit, but same buildings. The brick building on the end was built for the movie The Quick and the Dead, and it wasn't there at the time. This would have been the Grand Hotel. This is the hotel that the Earps pull up in when they first get into Tombstone. They park their uh, covered wagon right here. This is where they meet Sheriff Bean, and uh, the story unfolds from there. Now, if you remember in the uh, sequence towards the end of the movie, when all the cowboys are getting knocked off a few at a time, just those little snippets, do you remember the one where Doc Holliday and Turkey Creek kick open the door to a bedroom, and there's a cowboy laying in bed with two young ladies? Yeah. Yeah. By, the by all means move scene. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. The next to the last window is where that was filmed. Chilly. 
Marcus is sitting in the hotel reading a book mm -hmm. and Sheriff Bean walks in and says uh, I know what's going on between you and her and after tonight there's going to be one man in charge of Tombstone yep. yep. this is where it was filmed Josie would have been sitting right over here in a chair and Bean would have walked in through those doors and would have briskly walked across and this is where they had that now I am once again at the wrong angle here but this post here is the same one you see here in the film so, and before we walk out here, I do want to remind you, or you can now brag to your friends and neighbors, since you walked in that entryway, you walked under the bedroom from that vendetta scene. That <laughs> <laughs> the by all means move room. <laughs> in Tombstone, that would have been the Dragoon Saloon. And if you remember another vendetta ride scene, when you see a close-up of, of a cowboy boot with somebody wrapped the red sash around it, and the camera pans out, and it's two cowboys hung by the neck, they're hanging from that sign. saloon sign that stood just on the side of the building. Now this, what we call the Brown Beauty, the mental asylum right here. She's been in a lot of different things and has been uh, dual purposed in, in a couple movies. What scene towards the end of the movie is in a room that's almost completely white. And it's the last time two major characters of the movie are gonna see. It's when they're at the, uh, the hospital or the asylum, whatever it was. Well done, well done, golf clap. <laughs> Mm. Yes, the interior there on that through those double doors would have been the, the Glenwood Springs Sanatorium. The opening establishment shot shows an entirely different building, but as soon as it cuts to the interior, you're looking at that bottom floor there. So let's jump quite right over here to, to Ma Bell's boarding house. In Tombstone, that was a key building because that was the Can Can restaurant. It had a second story on it, but that is where they filmed the scene when the Earps are leaving town. Wyatt pulls his wagon up in front of it and says to Curly Bill and Johnny Ringo, I want you to know it's over. And what does Curly Bill say in response? Well, bye. There you go. <laughs> That's it. So if we want to look from an actor's perspective, you have in front of that building, you have Kurt Russell on the wagon. To the left of the door, you have Powers Booth. And to the right of it, you have Michael Bean, who, by the way, stopped in here two weeks ago. I heard you guys say it earlier. What building was that in Tombstone? That was uh, the, the Crystal Palace. The Crystal Palace. That's right. So this is where um, we're introduced to that building when the Earps, Doc Holliday, and Sheriff Bean are standing over here in front of the uh, Meyer Brothers Clothier store. And that's where the shot comes from when Doc Holliday makes the snide comment, very cosmopolitan. Mm -hmm. Out comes Turkey Creek, Texas Jack, and a few other men. And right up here in front of the saloon is where, or in front of the Crystal Palace is where Turkey Creek shoots the man down for cheating him on a bet. Speaking of that last scene, right here is where they filmed it. And you can tell this is the right location because you can see the post from the hotel, the porch, and the birdcage in the background, just like in the movie. Also, that porch is exactly the same as it appears in the film. Here we are, folks. Backside of the OK Corral. So if you want to move up here, I'll lay down for you how the earth got here. I know you three seem to have a real good handle on this. <laughs> um, as the Earps are walking down the street, that is... Uh, fulfilling the role of 4th Street right over here. Mm -hmm. They make the left turn. This building here would be Fly's Photography. And then right up here by that boardwalk is where the Earps would line up. So we're going to go in the back lot itself now. There is something very familiar about all this. nitpick me to death I know I'm gonna point out something so yet yeah, this uh, Adobe stall actually had a roof over it. there was another Adobe stall here it also had a roof on it the wall was higher those stalls in the back had a leaning uh, roof on them mm -hmm. uh, so but over you know 30 years since they filmed tombstone it's things have deteriorated and, and other productions have come out and changed things the way they wanted it to so how cool is this to be on the site of the filming of the OK Corral scene Notice the mountains and what's left of the boardwalk almost matches up perfectly with this shot from the film. Do you remember after the gunfight begins, Ike Clanton runs up to Wyatt, Wyatt pushes him aside, and Ike runs into Fly's photography here. Mm -hmm. Well, then he grabs Bean's pistol and busts out the windows and starts shooting at the Earths. The glass they use for that is what they call candy glass or sugar glass. 
knowing that they filmed out here from May to August, the coldest months in Southern Arizona, the candy glass didn't hold up very well and it would constantly warp even before they would call action. Notice those mountains in the background. Building down here toward, at, at the end of that one. Then very quickly you see it. Remember when Ike runs out of flies and he trips and falls? Mm -hmm. At the end of the street, right down here, would have been the facade of Hop Town, the Chinese section of Tombstone. Okay. I normally don't say that because most people can't remember that. <laughs> but you guys seem like you do. You know the movie inside. I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I believe this is where they shot the scene where Ike was bathing in that barrel of water. And I think the building we see behind him is the same one that we see right here. So... Our Tinsmith building, or sheriff's, depending on what you want to call it, uh, which sign you're looking at. I want to start with Tombstone. This was a dual-purpose building. Just like I was talking about the church down there, they used the exterior for one thing and the interior for something else. The exterior of this was the Oyster Cafe. You might remember in Tombstone, as the herbs are walking down and being tries to stop them there, if you look above their heads, you'll see the shingle that says oysters on it. The inside was the barbershop. That was, again, during the Vendetta Ride sequence when Wyatt jumps the horse through the window and then shoots a bunch of cowboys in the barbershop. We originally were told by one of the producers that they didn't jump the horse through this actual window frame. They built a temporary one down here on the ground. About three weeks ago, I had a guy on my tour, and after the tour was over, he told me that's not true. He said, yes, it is true they wanted to jump the horse through this window down here, they said, I'm the one that trained the horse. I spent a month training that horse to jump through this window. And I put up an argument and a fight, and finally they gave in, and they actually did jump through the window. There was no boardwalk here when they filmed Tombstone. There was just the steps over here. This was just all dirt. So uh, I have, didn't get his contact information, but I'm going to take his word for it. I think Because he, he knew enough about the filming of it and how they were set up that we already knew about that I think he's telling the truth. Now we're walking through the alleyway that was 4th Street in the movie, and notice the tall building in the background with the pointed roof. That is the same one we see in this shot here. The buildings on the left side are almost exactly the same as they appeared in the film. <laughs> but anyway, this building you're looking at was built just for the movie Tombstone. Now, for a long time prior to that, there had been a building here, uh, a, sec a two story building, but it, it was decrepit by the time the Tombstone crew got out here, so they built this building to fit their needs. Originally, what the plan was they built one building, but this left side, the red side, was strictly going to be the Oriental Saloon. The right side was going to be Campbell and Hatch's Billiard Park, and there was a wall separating the two halves. Well, when Kevin Jar, the first director, got fired, they brought on uh, George Cosmatos. He had that wall taken out. He had the U-shaped R put on wheels so they could move it side to side. And it ended up working out really well because if you pay attention or really closely watch in Tombstone, there are scenes that you can catch. To the, to the casual observer, you're not paying attention to it. But there are scenes where you think you're, the story is unfolding in the Oriental, but the actors are physically over in Campbell and Hatches. But again, you're not paying attention to that. You're listening to the story that's being told. Case in point, you guys remember at the after they, the Earps and the Cowboys leave the uh, Birdcage Theater and they all come over to the Oriental to party? Mm -hmm. The scene opens up where Doc, Morgan, and Wyatt are standing at the end of the bar. Wyatt's getting his coffee. And Doc asks him, do you consider yourself a married man? You think you're in the Oriental, but physically those three actors are standing over on this side in Camp One Hatches. But again, because he can move things around in there fluidly, it gave him a lot more room to tell the story. As we walked through the set, I was able to match up a few other shots from the movie. Well, kind of. Lieutenant Dan did mention this church had been used in the film. And he also said it had been rebuilt several times, but I think it's the same one that we see in this shot here. Uh, we had to fix this side. You can kind of see it doesn't really match up close. Yeah. Because there was a big bay window in here at one point on the side. Again, time and neglect, it was caving in on itself, so we had to do quite a bit of work on that. 
but the huh. inside is really interesting. They uh, one of the more recent productions renovated that inside for mm -hmm. us, and they made this into a doctor's office. Oh wow! They didn't use the inside in Tombstone, did they? Just the outside? Yeah, they did. Oh, they uh, did. You remember when Wyatt goes in and grabs his pistol out of the uh, dresser? Yes. For the OK Corral? Yes. Wow. Now. You remember I mentioned earlier about the porch is where Wyatt and Morgan were sitting. Yeah. In the movie, this part here in the front was actually pushed back further. This was added in the years since. Huh. Uh, for whatever reason, whatever production they were doing. Interesting. So this whole area here, and you can see when you walk in, you can see where the mm -hmm. original front of the house was. Yeah. Yeah, this was pushed out. I, I don't know if they did it during... Um, Miracle Sage Creek or what film it was. But Here's a shot of Wyatt's house from the movie and you can see these posts are exactly the same as they were in the film. Also, these little square trim pieces are still here as well. But yeah, Morgan and Wyatt would have been really sitting inside of here mm -hmm. when they were watching the procession go by. Wow. Very cool. And as I stand here looking off Wyatt's porch, I see the exact same thing he saw in the movie. But this is not a barn. Remember, this was the same building they used for the birdcage. You can actually see some of the adobe facade, which I never noticed before, in this shot here from the movie. And the boot hill would have been right here where this corral is. Do you remember when the uh -huh. Europe's come into town, they go by boot hill? Well, I would have sat right here in this corral area. Yeah. We're looking at an opposite angle now, but you can see Wyatt's house in the background on the left. And Boot Hill is gone, but Wyatt's house is still there. Well, I want to thank you all for coming along with us, taking a look at the Mezcal movie set today. This will be the final video of 2022, and I really hope you enjoyed it. It was so cool to finally get to be where the actual movie was filmed, especially after living in Tombstone for several months. And seeing the difference between the movie version and the real life version is really, really cool. But I also want to give a special thanks to Lieutenant Dan, our tour guide. It was very nice of him to uh, take some time out and show us a few extra things that most people don't usually get to see. And I definitely appreciate that. Now, we've barely scratched the surface of what you can see at Mezcal. They do tours on certain days. If you want to go out and check it out for yourself, go to their website. And in early 2023, we'll see even more movie locations that we didn't get to see in this video from other Hollywood films. But until then, folks, have yourself a happy new year, a merry Christmas, and until next time, we'll see you down the road.